Okay, two very interesting releases today so far. The first one is Vue 3.1 with new capabilities on Gemini API. The second one is Cloud Haiku 4.5, which is a very interesting release from Anthropic. So first, let's have a quick look at the features of Gemini or API with Vue 3.1. So you now have the ability to drive the video using multiple different images. You can create longer videos up to a minute long. And now you can use the first and last frame. We'll come back to that, but I want to talk about Haiku 4.5. So this is the latest model from Anthropic, which is much smaller and much more affordable on par with Sonnet 4. So it's almost one third of the cost, more than twice the speed, but on Sweet Benchmark, which is probably the only benchmark that Anthropic cares about, it surpasses the previous Sonnet 4 model. And some of the other key benchmarks, it also surpasses previous state-of-the-art models. If you look at something like Gemini 2.5 Pro, it actually beats it on a number of key benchmarks, which is pretty incredible to see, right? Now, we are hoping to have Gemini 3 pretty soon, so hopefully that is going to be new state-of-the-art, but time will tell. It's already available on Cloud Code. You can see that it's added. If you're using Haiku 4.5 in plan mode, it automatically uses Sonnet 4.5 for the planning and then Haiku 4.5 for execution, which I think is a pretty good balance, especially if you're trying to do simpler tasks and you are able to divide the complex task into simpler subtasks, then you can assign them to Haiku 4.5. Entropic is trying to portray this as a workhorse model. So you will be able to use a model like this, which is much faster, a lot more token efficient, a lot less expensive to do tasks that don't need Sonnet 4.5 level intelligence. So I think it could be a really good balance between speed, efficiency, and the pricing. I would highly recommend to check it out if you are building with Cloud. Now, another use case that they are discussing here is that we'll be able to make computer use tools like Cloud for Chrome much faster and much more useful than before, 4.5. Now I am allowing it to take all the actions that it needs, so it's not going to ask me for permissions, but let's look for a stopwatch. Okay, so we're going to assign it a simple task. Go to the IRS website and download the W form for me. Okay, so for transcription, I'm using an app that I personally built. So we're going to start this. You can actually see all the action that it takes. So for example, it navigated to the IRS website, which was pretty neat. And now it takes a screenshot. After every action, sometimes it waits for two seconds. And I think that is to make sure that an action was performed. So right now it's going to look for forms and instruction links, right? Again, take a screenshot. So now it's thinking about finding the search box, right? It seems to be relatively slower compared to something like Gemini computer use agent. But with Haiku 4.5, I think it's much faster compared to Sonnet 4.5. I was actually hoping that it's going to be much faster even in this case, but it's taking its time. So let's see what it does. Okay, so I think it tried to directly use the URL and it failed. So now it's, it's going back. Now it's looking for that form and I think it should be able to download the form. So it seems like I have run the same test before. You can actually see that either I or the agent clicked on these links, right? But let's wait for it. Now it's been almost a minute and 40 seconds and it hasn't completed the task yet. Okay, it's actually asking me, can you confirm you want me to download the file? Yes. Okay, so now I think it's going to go ahead and download the file for us. Okay, at least it opened the file, right? So it took almost two minutes. Okay, so almost two minutes and 30 seconds. So now let me try to repeat the same task with Sonnet 4.5. Can you go to the IRS website and download the W9 form for me? Okay, let's restart this. 
Okay, I think the planning is going to be much better, but it probably is going to take much longer. Okay, so Sonnet 4.5 has also done the task, but it took about three minutes and 30 seconds. So the interesting thing was that this is taking a lot less step compared to Haiku, but much longer. Now I'll probably create another video on comparing Haiku code execution capabilities with some of the other coding agents out there, but a few interesting observations. So this is from a company called Evy. Here they are doing a vibe check and topic cooked on Haiku 4.5. They say that according to their testing, it's very similar in performance to 4.5 Sonnet, but it's much faster and much cheaper. And the cheaper part is relative, right? So it's priced at $1 per million input tokens, $5 per million output token. If you compare it to something like GPT-5 mini, that's 25 cents per million input and 2.5 cents per million output, right? So on the input, we are looking at four times more expensive compared to GPT-5 mini. And I think the same could be said about the pricing of GPT, Gemini 2.5 flash, right? So it's a lot more expensive compared to GPT-5 mini and Gemini 2.5 flash, but the capabilities are definitely much better based on some of the benchmarks that we are seeing. So keep that in mind. Now, something that you will notice about Entropic is that they're not compromising on pricing at all. All the other companies are reducing pricing, but Entropic seems to be the only company who are maintaining the same pricing from one model version upgrade to the other. In general, people tend to be looking for the best model, but let me know what your thoughts are on this. Now, coming back to the Vue 3.1 update, I want to show you the API structure and how easy it is now to build with Vue 3.1. With this new model, they added the capability to provide reference images. So for example, I think in this case, you see these two reference images and let's see if I can run this video. It does have sound or audio. Right. But if you want to generate something like that, you will be able to do that by providing the two reference images and describing what exactly you want, and it will be able to combine it. The next thing that they added was the ability to extend screens. And I think it uses the last second of the previous video to extend based on that, right? In this case, you provide a video to extend. That's going to be the whole video, but the model uses the last few seconds to extend it further. So here is just one quick example. And as you can see, this video is longer than the normal eight second. And I also have seen that people been able to actually create much longer videos. Now you can also provide the first and last images or frames. So this would basically transition from the first frame to the last frame which is pretty neat. And you can do all this through the API as well. Now there's also brings us to the pricing. So it's the same price as VO3. That means it's 40 cents per second. If you're looking at the default version with audio, if you're looking at uh, VO3.1 fast with audio, then it's 15 cents per second. Now this is relatively more expensive compared to Sora2 the lower version is 10 cents per second. If you are looking at higher resolution, it goes up to 50 cents per second. But I personally think that we, at the moment, we are at a point at which the model capabilities from almost all of the Frontier Labs are pretty much the same. It now comes down to the applications that you are building in. And at the end of the day, it's going to be how cost effective they are and what are your margins. Anyways, do let me know your thoughts. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.